I welcome you all on this special occasion and I thank you for being here today. On this day, we celebrate and recognise those who achieved an ATAR of 90 or above. Today, we as a community acknowledge those high achievers. We come together to celebrate the hard work. We come together to celebrate the hard work and dedication of the 2022 HSCE. We are incredibly proud of your accomplishments and look forward to seeing what the future holds for you. To all the students, past and present, congratulations on your success and thank you for being part of the forum's story. I would like to invite our acknowledged students to take their seats. Thank you. Welcome our students. Thank you. Yeah, one more clap. All right, thank you, Mr. Khalifi. Excellent. Our first speaker will be representing the New South Wales Opposition Leader, Chris Minns. Brian Langton served both as Mayor of Cogra and as the member for Cogra in the New South Wales Legislative Assembly. Brian Langton was also, also a former minister. Please let us welcome Brian Langton to the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for the invitation to be here. It's, uh, it's a great honour to be here where we can honour these outstanding students and to pay them the respect they deserve for the enormous amount of work they put in to be here today. It's a particular pleasure to be representing Chris Minns, who is sorry he can't be here, but he's asked me to extend his keen interest in education reform, which I'm sure you'll agree will be a key plank of any successful government in the election which is coming up. It's a, an area which is, I think, uppermost in the minds of a lot of people, and particularly parents, uh, where are we going in terms of education for the next generation? Uh, Chris particularly has a very keen interest in that subject and I'm sure you've already heard about that. I just simply want to say on behalf of Chris Menz, thank you for the invitation. Congratulations to all the award winners today and we hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bayside Council knows the value of education and have supported our initiatives throughout the past few years. Our next speaker is the Mayor of Bayside, Christina Curry. Welcome to the stage, Christina. Good evening, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. I want to acknowledge all the special guests and my, my councillor colleagues, Councillor Joe Wada, Councillor Liz Barlow and Councillor Greta Werner. Well, tonight we're here to recognise your achievements. Well done to each of you. It's a tremendous effort that you've made and we, we want to acknowledge your hard work and your dedication um, in being so successful. So these students have not only received great results, but through what has been a very disrupted schooling time um, over the last few years and, and to get through that and, and so well. You should be really proud of yourselves because it was an extremely challenging time. We have 64 schools in our local government area and it's wonderful to have such talented people coming out of our schools in this area. I am a former teacher and educator and I have a great passion for education 
and I believe that education opens many doors and we need to continue to encourage a love of learning so that we can, um, which keeps rewarding us throughout our lives. So I encourage everyone, not just HSC students, but to keep building on knowledge and keep learning and taking every opportunity. The world's gonna open up a range of opportunities and um, take every one of them because you don't know where it leads you. And as they say, we, were, we pretty much had one or two careers, but this generation are going to have numerous careers. So what they start off with in their degree now, who knows? where um, life will take them. So um, thank you for having me. I wish you all the best and want to acknowledge all the parents as well because they don't um, get through this without the strong support and the family network that, that keep them motivated and provide that support. So thank you everyone. Um, a few years ago, I had the honour of joining the new Uncliffe Aurora Committee and I was amazed and impressed with this strong revolutionary leadership that was affecting change at every level of the club. I was also very pleased with their collaboration with the Banksia Tigers. The One Community motto is gaining momentum and is getting stronger and stronger. Both clubs have been doing an amazing job in our area. Although I'm no longer on the Uncliffe Aurora Committee, the Cultural Forum is collaborating with Uncliffe Aurora and Banksia Tigers. Engagement with the community aims to be extended beyond our current events. Our current resolve will be expressed in various actions and initiatives in the future, working with the football clubs for the betterment of and development of our youth in the St George area. Here to speak on behalf of both football clubs is Mariam Faraj and Fatima Gasha. Welcome to the stage. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, I've been thrown in the deep end. Uh, my name is Mariam Faraj. I'm actually club secretary of Ankle Rural Football Club. And in my day job, I'm the general manager of clinical services for Central and Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network. Um, so I will be talking on behalf of both clubs. And really tonight, I just wanted to acknowledge um, the, the wonderful contributions that parents have made to support um, these high achievers and congratulate them on their efforts. Um, and I also wanted to um, talk about football and recognise that it's more than just a sport. It's a cultural phenomenon. Uh, that brings people together. Playing is a uh, playing a critical role in shaping communities and providing a sense of belonging, particularly for our youth. It is imperative that we ensure that we use our influence as football club leaders and resources to promote education and learning amongst our youth. This is something we strive to achieve along with Banksia Tigers Football Club. Uncle Ferrara um, has been guiding our youth into making better career decisions and equipping them with resources and opportunities using our sponsors' network. A number of young people have had the opportunity already to be placed in positions and apprenticeships as a result of these strong networks, which we hope to continue to support and encourage. Uh, higher education is um, not, uh, was, was not so, something commonly pursued when I was um, growing up. Uh, in fact, I was one of the few Lebanese Muslim um, females to attend university, thanks to the support and encouragement of my parents. So in higher education is really valued in um, our household. And as we can see from tonight's um, uh, event, uh, it's really great to see the strong encouragement and support it now has across our community. And I really hope that it is only strengthened and continued to be supported in um, all uh, avenues of our um, work. So I will um, leave it there. There was more to the presentation, but unfortunately I only have half the speech. So uh, thank you for tonight and um, all the best. Thank you, Mariam. Okay. Um, on this note, uh, I would like to share with, you, with the audience that the Cultural Forum Sydney had the opportunity to meet with former award recipients. It was very inspiring to hear all about their journey and their experiences.
Here to share with us his story since graduating in 2005, former award recipient, psychology and law graduate, Ali Abbas. Welcome him to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening to you all. My name is Ali Abbas, Ibn Walid Al-Kathir Abbas. First and foremost, I'd like to take a moment to recognize and acknowledge the efforts and achievements of the students here tonight. Um, I remember sitting in your spot eight years ago, uh, watching many people come up and speak, trying to figure out where I had seen them from. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Um, yeah, so I remember sitting in your spot eight years ago, watching many people come up and, uh, and speak, trying to figure out where I had seen them from, and asking my mom, do you know them? Do you know this person? Do you know? And uh, I think it was just me trying to cope with the nervousness, and I don't think the nerves have gone away standing up here today. But um, yeah, congratulations on completing HSC and doing so in such an exceptional way. So well done. Okay, so in terms of my, uh, my own experiences, um, upon finishing E12, as cliche as it is, um, I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, my inner talk was telling me, uh, was, was set on figuring out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, I couldn't make a mistake, there's no going back, I need to decide right now what I'm doing for inshallah the next 50 years. Um, not one of my greatest approaches to making a decision. Um, but I went and spoke to a careers advisor at my school and a three minute speech actually got me on my way. I told him of my uncertainty and he said, don't think too far ahead. Uh, just look at what you enjoy now and build on that. And so I did. I, I enjoyed legal studies. Um, so I chose law and thought, why not add some extra flavor and do some psychology as well? And, um, and yeah, my own challenges made me interested in the way the mind worked. So naturally I moved towards it. Um, the biggest thing I'd say that uh, although your experiences at uni will be different to my own of course um, but the biggest thing I learned uh, I'd say is that it's a place of discovery um, of exploration of potential and of course of learning um, you can make it what you want it to be um, speak to those who are there to help you especially your lecturers and your tutors um, set your goals high for sure and continue to work, work towards them um, if there are another couple things I'd uh, emphasize on uh, that I'd like to come from this speech to you guys specifically, don't ever feel that you're tied down by a decision that you may have made in the past. I mean, when I was younger, I wanted to become a farmer. Um, I wanted to be a taxi driver. There's a bunch of things. And it wasn't anything other than the fact that that's what I thought was at that time was interesting to me. Um, not to say that I won't come around and do them in the future, who knows. but. Um, so long as uh, you're completely committed to the decision that you make then and there. That's the most important thing. It's one thing to change your path because there's a roadblock and it's another to see, uh, sorry, it's another to see another way to go about achieving your goal. So although it might be uncomfortable and scary, maybe a bit anxious towards the change, you know, you might hear things too old or too committed, too late, please back yourself. Be courageous and have faith. Um, just to finish up, I'd like to thank uh, Haji Jumana for reaching out and giving me the opportunity to be a part of this celebration. Um, and Haji Sam Havala as well and the entire cultural association um, for the work that you continue to do. Um, it's invaluable. So thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ali. Um, always great to listen to uh, former students and to hear all about their journey and get some good advice. And on this note, hard work and dedication underpinned by good habits ultimately lead to success. Here to speak on behalf of the 2022 Year Award recipients is Mario Barud. Please welcome him to the stage. Good, in, good evening, everyone. It's an amazing and privileged feeling to be standing here today representing the highest achievers in the Lebanese community. I myself am a half Lebanese, half Polish, so I only have half the facial hair and half the muscles, but I do have 100% of the smarts. 
Firstly, I'd like to congratulate all my fellow high achievers on your incredible achievements and for putting in all the hard work in these past two years to get you to where you are now. To get an ATAR above 90 really shows not just your smarts, but your dedication and ability to see through a very long, tiring year and notice the rewards that will come at the end of it. And those rewards now have really come true. It is from the help of our families that have also led us to this point. Lebanese people are very family oriented and view family as, a, as the most important source of support and guidance. Our parents and elders have instilled in us a desire to strive for excellence and to make the most of the opportunities that are available to us. So thank you to my family and to all of our families. My journey throughout years 11 and 12 was full of many ups and downs. I went from an average student in year 11 to being ranked first in almost all my subjects in year 12. I went from someone who would study only days before an exam to someone who studied consistently every day, every weekend and every holiday. I went from struggling in advanced maths, English and chemistry to topping the standard subjects in year 12. So to all the current and future Year 12 students, I have set a perfect example of how you can achieve great success no matter what subjects you pick. Be true to yourself and choose subjects that suit your abilities. As long as you put your head down and work hard, you will succeed. I give a lot of credit to my family and teachers for supporting me throughout my HSE. But without putting in all the hard work myself, I wouldn't be standing here today. That hard work involves sacrificing my time, my hobbies, and the things I love to stay home and study. I realize that I have a whole life ahead of me to have fun and hang out with friends and family, but only one shot at the HSA, so I know I had to make it count. Three, th three things I learned throughout year 12, which are three pieces of advice I'll give to other students, is this. One, the best way to study is to teach and be able to explain the content to others. Two, get ahead of your classes so that by the time it's being taught in class, it's revision for you. And three, do what works best for you. You don't always have to follow and rely on the teachers or other students' ways of studying. Do what works best for you. To leave you today, I would like to once again congratulate all my fellow high achievers for their hard work and dedication throughout our time at school. Being named the top achiever at this ceremony is an incredible honour, but it is important to remember that success is not just about achieving high marks or winning awards. It is about the journey of personal growth, resilience and perseverance. So work hard, work in silence and let your results speak for themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Um, as one journey ends, another begins. Congratulations and good luck to all of you recipients today. I would like to invite Sam Habballah, the current chair at the Cultural Forum Sydney, who will present a plaque as a token of appreciation to Dr. Qasim Mustafa. I would like to invite Dr. Mustafa to say a few words. Thank you. Dear guests and dear friends, it's an honor to be standing here tonight to accept this award. My deep gratitude to the Culture Forum Sydney team for this kind of 
for this kind of recognition. This is not only a, a personal achievement, but also a testament of the effort of the forum and the community. The inception of the forum in, April, in August 2014 followed long discussion with my friend Sam. <clears throat> At that time, about the need for a community organization to supporting youth in our area, in schooling, in education. As a group, we participated in many events and activities, despite the challenge we managed to achieve the desired outcomes. Moving forward, I trust the forum will continue its great work in supporting our students to achieve top results and, of course, supporting the youth in general. Once more, many thanks to the forum Sydney team, Chairperson Sam Hopalla, and all fellow committee members. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kassim. Yeah, the uh, forum, Culture Forum Sydney, uh, Sydney, was established in 2014 by uh, the two of us with Dr. Kassim, who were then thinking about an organization to help our local youth, mainly in education, other issues. That's how the, the idea came about, 2014, August 2014. Now, I know the previous speaker spoke for briefly, which is my advantage. Uh, I'll probably talk a bit long if you don't mind, maybe about 10 minutes. We are uh, going, like running ahead of time anyway, so I need to make up for this. I want to, to begin by acknowledging the uh, traditional custodians of the land on which we meet tonight in paying my respect to the elders past, present, and emerging. The Honorable Brian Lantern, former minister and member for COGRA, representing Mr. Chris Means, uh, uh, member, uh, MP in New South Wales, opposition leader and member for COGRA, Dr. Christina Curry, Mayor Bayside Council, councillors Liz Barlow, Greta Werner, Joe Awada, Hassan Awada, Principal Mark Masiniak, media and community representative, dear guests. As we in, in the Cultural Forum Sydney do every year, around this time, we organize this uh, gathering to celebrate the results of our HCC High Achievers. Thank you, each and everyone, for joining us tonight. Your presence is a testimony to the importance of the occasion. Every one of you is a special guest. So, it is indeed a privilege and an honor for me to be standing here at such an important and special community event. To say a few words on behalf of our team, this gathering it is a special one in many ways, really. We've got here a community, like representative for the various uh, like, uh, parts of the community. We've got the young, the seniors, we've got uh, uh, community, media, uh, academics, uh, uh, officials. So if we wanted to organize a community event, we couldn't find a better like, a setting than this one. And we are gathering in uh, such a great uh, hall, the Rockdale Town Hall. So I really feel excited and in, in a way honored really to be talking this uh, occasion. I've got a few apologies to note uh, ahead of the event. The Honorable Mark Khoury MP, the Minister for Multiculturalism, sent his apology. The Honorable Sarah Mitchell, uh, Minister for Education, and Bayside Council Deputy Mayor Scott Morrissey. He apologized because he's interstate. And now to the stars of the event, whose results we are acknowledging tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations to Mario Barut, Angelina El Hajj, Joseph Mozelmani, Hussein Hijazi, Ali Hamoud, and Ali Saab. You have already proved that you can meet challenges in uh, Excel. Well done.
Ali Hamoud uh, is not with like one of the high achievers is not with us tonight because he started uni at, uh, at, uh, in Queensland, he apparently started classes early so he couldn't be with us. Uh, his dad, Hajj Mahmoud, will uh, receive the plaque on his behind. Now, a big, also, a big tribute, to, of course, to, the, to your parents, which we, we have them here. I'm excited. Uh, we are all excited. Uh, we, uh, big tribute to them for their love and guidance, for believing on you, and for supporting you all the way. I have no doubt they're very proud of you. We are all, as a community, proud of you. Also, not to forget a word of appreciation for the teachers and staff of the schools who uh, no doubt provided the guidance in right environment. Namely, Marist College Cogra, Bethany College Hurstville, Newton College, Al Zahra College, Alpha Omega Senior College. And back to our stars, the students. You are now transiting from school to another exciting stage of your life. Try to embrace new challenges and opportunities and never to be afraid to take risks or follow your dreams. While you think about the future in becoming a professional, normally we're junior, we are in a hurry to finish to start work in this one, but don't let this, uh, like, uh, 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 let, let not enjoy the university years. They are real precious times. You will have uh, reflect on this back later and you will have really good memories. So while you study, and of course it's uh, hard work, try to enjoy those university years. Oh, we often say, we say that about education, obviously to, tonight we're celebrating the uh, like, uh, outstanding results of high achievers and uh, uh, that brings the issue of education. We say that the destiny of our country is shaped in its classroom. Education is a means of achieve, achieving a world of peace, a world of justice and freedom and equality for all. No good life is possible without education. Having said that, there's no such thing as a good or not so good area of study. The good area of study is the one you like, the one you have passion for, and the one you believe you can build a career in. A career in. Now, some words of gratitude to people who have supported us in this event. Obviously, the Honorable Brian Lantern, uh, currently representing Mr. Chris Means, and uh, Dr. Uh, Christina Curry, councillors, and other officials who have taken time out of their busy schedule to be with us. Thank you. Council staff, and I want to name two uh, Bayside Council staff, Helen uh, Evanson and Basil. Those lady and, and guy, they've been really wonderful because organizing this event is a, it's a big, big task, believe me. And uh, those two have been so supportive and helpful in replying, answering my questions. So I really thank, thank them both. I think Basil is uh, here somewhere. Also, because we rely on uh, sponsors, private sponsors to uh, fund the event, uh, I've got, uh, need to thank the uh, sponsors. I would like to thank Mr. James Zhang and Olivia. James, you understand? James and Olivia are supportive of this event. They run a tutoring center with the branches in Kogra and Burwood. Uh, the business name is Open Wisdom Education. I think we can see it here. What is, uh, you, I know uh, James from Toastmaster, but that's how we met. But what is unique, I'm getting to know more about this uh, like center. They specialize in the years seven to 12 tuition with focus on English and uh, science, uh, chemistry, physics, and biology. And their classes are one-on-one, one-on-two, -on -one, one -on or one-on-three only. So obviously, a much better result, much better attention. And uh, to, as an evidence of this, in HSC 2022, 20, uh, 65% of the students achieved 90 plus. So well done to them. And, um, if you want, uh, obviously we all want to invest in our uh, like uh, kids uh, uh, 
an education, so you can talk to James and Olivia after the event. Also, I would like to thank uh, Student Word, another business. Uh, Akram Mardini is uh, uh, the manager of Koti Arajif on his behalf. Uh, so what also, they, they are another supporter of the business. It's a kind of business that we, uh, we kind of don't know much about it. They support the people who want to come, uh, overseas students to come to study in Australia. They provide information about the uh, entry to universities, uh, courses, it, basically information help them with their visas as well. Not only that, not only they support students who want to come overseas, which every one of us would, would know some relatives or family who want to come to study in Australia with the best universities, is that they help even local students here. People who may not be able to get to the course that they want, they can advise and do bridge your course and basically give them advice how to get to the course. So uh, again, you can talk to Rajiv after the uh, like, uh, formal part. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, uh, our regular friends and uh, partners, Uncle of Aurora and Banksia Tigers. We heard uh, the speech of them. Uh, they are more like, I, don't, I wouldn't say support, they're like sponsors because we are talking to them to work together because we're all local community groups to support our uh, local youth. They basically have a plan because while in the Culture Forum Sydney we want to achieve things to support the youth, our resources are very limited and we're all volunteers. So we want to partner with them, with their experience in the soccer and the uh, sport to, uh, to work together. So thank you for them. A uh, few like in the, uh, individuals. I want to, uh, individuals. I want to ask uh, Ismail Khalil, who is my cousin, uh, always a supporter with uh, money, with time. I don't know. Most of you would know, would know him. And uh, also the uh, uh, the ladies at the door, uh, the reception, the, who welcomed you. And uh, not to forget our professional photographer, Mustafa Hijazi, for ever ever professional coverage of good events. So, this event has been in the making for three months. It may look like a regular event or ordinary event, but it takes a long, a long time. And uh, in this regard, I need to obviously thank the people, uh, the team, and uh, who uh, are behind this work. So, my team members, Jumana Tanana, Wafa Juha, Hana Asrur, Sana Abu Khalil, and of course, Hussein Webi. The MC. If I uh, I can invite the team members to please come to the stage, so people can put a face to name. For those who don't know them, Raj Khalil Jaber, Hussain Wabi, you saw him, Wafa Jaha, Hana Asro, Jamal Tanana, and Sana Abu Khalil. That's the team who has been working for. Uh, uh, like we've been, we've been planning this since last November. Upon his retirement, I also want to pay tribute to co-founder and uh, former chairperson. Uh, you saw him a short while ago, uh, former chairperson, our friend Dr. Kasim Mustafa, for his diligent work and valuable contribution to the business of the forum for many years since inception. And to conclude, I'd like once more to thank you, our dear guests, for your kind attendance and participation. And to the young ladies and men, or the young lady, not ladies, the young lady and the men of the, uh, to, to, to my right, our uh, 2022 HSCI achievers, we wish you all the best in the years ahead and in life in general. We hope to meet you later in your lives to celebrate your future milestones and achievements, the way we did with Ali uh, Abbas today. Thank you all, and please stay on after the program for an opportunity to meet and greet, enjoy the light food, refreshments, and sweets. 
enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sam. Um, very quickly, upon my return to the uh, new school year, and as it's the case with many teachers, I opened up my email, an amazing, and, um, an amazing email was among these emails. It was actually from a student from 2022. Although I didn't teach the student, and some people here could, uh, uh, in the audience are teachers with me, teaching the HSC Arabic course. However, sometimes as a teacher, you don't get thanked uh, for those students who achieve a band six or uh, do well only. Sometimes a simple conversation could have a massive impact. And this student just wanted to say thank you for, for very few words that I had said on the last day of school. The student had missed out on few marks uh, in terms of achieving a band six. And all I was able to say to her was, the past is the past, and all you can do is focus on the future. Um, it didn't mean too much at the time. HSC exam um, time comes and those few words she remembered and those few words were enough to motivate her and she did achieve that band six and she decided that she was going to say thank you so here we all teachers and parents and community members words carry a lot of energy let us choose our words very carefully in how we guide and mentor and support our students that are sitting for the current HSC year